And do you accept, you know, the notion that you've got more sort of examination of your private life since you've entered politics? Um, I suppose so. I suppose so. Um, but I mean, I, look, I've, I've um, is that the case? Because I'm not sure that is the case. I mean, it, I suspect it will be the case. I'm not sure it is yet. But are, are but you prepared you, for that? Yeah, I did, look, I, I don't like the... I don't like the invasiveness of the British media. I think there's a real problem there. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. Mm. And it's difficult to complain when I, you know, I use the media. If I want, you know, I had a, an article placed in the Standard yesterday on an issue which I think is really important, garden grabbing and massive overzealous development of our green spaces, playing fields and so on. And would I have been able to get that in the newspapers without having the kind of background that I have? Well, it, would be, it certainly would have been more difficult. Mm. So it's a trade-off in a way. I mean, I, it's not to excuse some of the invasiveness of the British press. I think that is a problem. I think people are entitled to a private life. I, you know, you quite often see exposés of MPs' private lives, which I think are totally uncalled for, totally un, 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 unjustified. But you know, I suppose you just have to you just have to ignore it. Mm. You know, I mean, that's, you, that's you, the way it is. You endured your own sort of expose um, in two thousand and six. Really. What did you go through there? I, you know what? I, do, I don't. Um, whenever negative things are written about me, if they're written by, in a constructive way, I mean, I don't mind being criticised, you know, we reduced, produced our, our, our report for the Conservative Party, there were, you know, lots and lots of, you know, detailed, hostile comment pieces written, but I read most of them, and I didn't, you know, I think, was, you know, I didn't agree with everything I read, obviously, it would have been odd if I had, but I don't mind that, I think that's part of the big discussion, I think that's right, you introduce a new idea, it's going to be devoured, it's going to be debated, it's going to be pulled apart, and that's exactly what should happen. But some of the comments that, 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 that surrounded that, in the tabloids particularly, I thought were totally unhelpful and, and quite often deliberately misleading. And I stopped reading that stuff because I just found it infuriating. I mean, I care passionately about these issues. So when you in introduce, you know, we didn't, I'll give you an example of this, we introduced a, a, one of our ideas, it was a small idea, but I think very obvious, and that is that at the moment if you want to build on a greenfield site, there's no VAT. But if you want to extend your home or upgrade your home or or, 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 or build on genuine brownfield site, you do pay VAT. And our view is you just switch that over. So from the Treasury's <coughs> point of view, it's neutral. There's no loss or gain. Yeah. But it encourages better use of existing stock and it protects the green ad. That's what they do in the United States and it works. And they've got much more green space than we do. We introduced that. And the headline that followed was Tories to make it more expensive to upgrade your home, which is the exact opposite of the truth. But it's just one tiny example of, I think, how... how if there's a, a prevailing narrative within the media on, any, on a particular issue, I think everything that follows that is always misleading and always unhelpful. But that's just the nature of the press. I'm not sure what you can do about it. You can complain about it and be upset about it, but I'm not sure there's a lot you can do. But I, I took the view a long time ago that unhelpful or uh, um, uh, unconstructive articles I just simply wouldn't read. I think it's probably the healthiest thing to do. <laughs> so stuff about my personal life, for example, I don't read that stuff. So, I mean, I, you know, sometimes people ask me about things that were printed in the newspapers, and the likelihood is I haven't read it, which I think is a good thing, and I don't want to change that. Right. My, I'm the only key, yeah, no, that's, 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 that is crucial. I mean, I, you know, as my children grow older, then you have to take slightly more interest because you want to protect your children. But so I, can, you but tell I me, can you tell me the reality of what happened with you and Alice Rothschild that was all over no, the No, I'm not going to talk about personal stuff. I wouldn't, I'm just not going to do that. I didn't talk at the time, um, and I never would. I would never talk about personal stuff. That's, I think, a rule that anyone involved in the public life, anyone involved in politics, absolutely has to ad adhere to. And if you don't, I think it's a very slippery slope. You know, so would you be in favour of a privacy law? Absolutely. I think you need a privacy law. Absolutely. And I don't think it's right to suggest that privacy laws would prevent the media, for example, from doing the really important work that they do. Yeah. I think it's about decency, that's all. It's about respecting boundaries. But I think yeah. that's it's absolutely crucial. But yeah. if a politician was having an affair, thereby living a lie, should they not be exposed? I don't see why. I mean, if, if a politician is doing something which runs against something that they've been preaching about or legislating on in the past, well, that makes them a hypocrite. And I think that's legitimate fodder for the media campaign. Mm -hmm. But I don't think what a politician gets up to in his or her private life is of any concern to the media or the pu public at large. I just don't believe that. Sure, if someone is presenting one side to the public for the sake of his job but is actually living a lie. Well, it depends what you mean by presenting. What is, you know, give me an example of that. I mean, what, what, who is presenting what to the public, which is, which is emerged as a lie? And I can't, you know. Well, John Prescott, for example, you know, do you think his, do you think his affair should have been exposed? I, no, I don't actually. I mean, I don't, where was the lie? Where was the hypocrisy? 
I mean, I, you know, I have, it's not, I have to admit I didn't follow the story very well. Maybe there were all kinds of legitimate reasons for the press to get involved. Maybe he'd been saying things in the past which contradicted what he was actually getting up to in his own life. Look, the good example today, Elliot, I forget his name, Spitzer. That is yeah. the correct name? Um, I ought to know. I'm not so sure, actually. I ought to know. The guy in the States. Yeah. The client nine. Yeah, this is the client <laughs> nine, exactly. If that's, this is potentially very lively what we're doing now. <laughs> Um, but you've got a situation there where, you know, again, all I know is what's in the newspapers at the moment. But if it's the case that here's a man who waged war against prostitution in New York, and yet he was a client of a prostitution ring, there's hypocrisy there. Clear his hypocrisy, and I think it's absolutely right that the media would feel uh, uh, um, uh, justified in pursuing that. I, I mean, it's a, it's a clear-cut case of hypocrisy. But, but do you think um, an electorate, when they've got yeah. a prospective candidate, say for a nice area like Richmond, that yeah. they would like to know if one of their candidates might or might not be having an affair? But, I mean, I think if you look into any person's private life, you're going to find, you're going to find things which you don't like. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, that's human. That's what, that's what happens. I don't know. I don't think so. I, don't, I think people are entitled to a private life. You know, some politicians choose to make their public life very, very, their private life very public. Sarkozy is an example of that. I think he's made a terrible mistake. I like that in France, that people are... To, you know, people are judged on the, what they deliver, they're judged on their policies, they're judged on what they say and do, and they're allowed a private life. And I think what he's done, he'll probably live to regret. I'm a fan of Sarkozy as it happens. I think he's done a lot of good things, particularly on the environment. But I think it's a mistake that, and I think that, you know, there's a feeding frenzy now in terms of, you know, his private life. That's going to have a negative impact on his family, on his children. Maybe he'll start a new family. I don't know how old they will are that, uh, over there. Uh, uh, Mrs. Sarkozy. But, you know, it's, I, I, I think you're asking for trouble. I think it's a mistake. It's his decision. It's not right or wrong, but it's not something I would choose to do. You know, you'll never see in my literature, my political literature in Richmond, for example, you'll never see, um, I will never use my children to make myself appear a more attractive person for voters in Richmond. I just wouldn't do that. I mean, if you could tell me right now that I'd gain 4%, 5% of the vote by having lots of pictures of myself surrounded by my children, I would choose, I'd prefer simply not to be elected. I just will never do that. And if, you know, you, you, you are very entitled to come back and call me the most appalling hypocrite if you ever see that. But I just wouldn't do it. I, think it's a, I just think it's an abuse of children. I wouldn't, from my point of view, I wouldn't do that. Plenty of politicians choose the, choose the opposite, and that's entirely down to them. There is no right and wrong, I don't think. But from my point of view, I would never do that. Do you think I it's think, wrong to say Gordon Brown to talk about his, his child with cystic fibrosis? I think it's right and wrong. I think he's entitled to do whatever he thinks is right. I, just, I don't feel any right to comment or judge Gordon Brown or David Cameron or anyone else on how they you know, how they run their affairs, how they, you know, how they, you know, relate to the public and what the message, what the personal story is that they tell. I just wouldn't do that. I think it's wrong. I think it's a, um, I think it's, 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 in the context of the media we have today, I think if you start doing that, I think the media then automatically feels um, justified in stepping, it's very hard to prevent the media from stepping over the mark, whereas I've never involved my children in publicity of any sort. And therefore, I'm entitled, in my view, to come down very heavily on the media if they were to, in any way, you know, inflict that kind of spotlight on my own family, on my own children. So, I mean, it's, 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 um, I think that's, that's, that's something that I will guard. But is that when you see, you know, historically MPs, you know, exposed in the tabloids and basically run out of office, does that not hold a fear of what you might have to do or change your life in any way? I don't, I don't... I don't think so. I think if you're straightforward, I mean, look, you know, it's, it's, as long as you don't pretend to be something you're not, then, then I think you're, you're okay. But I mean, I focus on, you know, my intro, I have a, look, I'm not a career politician. I'm not somebody who has a, a long-term goal of reaching the top of the party and, and becoming boss of the party or prime minister. It's just not something, I'm not a career politician. That's not what's got me into politics. I was running The Ecologist magazine because I saw it as the most useful contribution I could make at the time to getting things to change. Um, I have foundations which raise money to fund the most effective campaigns to bring about change. And I got involved in politics for exactly the same reason. And I, it, so far it seems to be a useful thing to do. Um, but that's it. That's it. And if, if for as long as I'm, for as long as this is a useful thing to do, for as long as I feel that this is a useful contribution, then I'll continue to do it.